inside joke. Hello. For those of you who think you've seen better organized riots, I can appreciate that. For those of you that I have not met, my name is Ed Kinlaw, and we have something new today. Um, Govind Ryan's one of my favorite bridge partners. Uh, he has asked if he could tape this lecture. I said it would be fun, but I need to let you know that this lecture is going to be taped, um, and it looks like I'm the only person that's going to be on camera, uh, but if you ask questions, make them good ones. <laughs> Just kidding, kidding. Is going to put it on YouTube so we can replay it? <laughs> yes, sir. Can we get a joke before he starts? You do. I wanted to mention that before the... <laughs> All right, guy walks into a bar, says, um, walks up to the bartender, says, hey, anybody want to hear a UVA joke? Bartender says, well, you know, I went to UVA, and um, the guy sitting over there, the really heavy set guy that, you know, the muscular one, he played football for UVA, and our bouncer also went to UVA. So I want to ask you, do you really want to tell a UVA joke in here? I says, well, not if I'm going to have to explain it three times. <laughs> All right, so it's one of those kinds of groups. That's great. Um, how many of y'all were here last week? Or denied no, two weeks ago two weeks for the ago. Easter. Okay. Um, so we've got a number of people that were not here last week. For their benefit, and only for their benefit, we are going to have a little bit of review. I'm going to draw my bridge compass, which bizarrely enough looks like an ordinary compass. All right, so you got your bridge compass, north, south, east, and west. If South is declare, what do we call North? Dummy. North is the dummy. And if South is declare, who is on opening lead? West. West. And what do we call East? East. East. Correct. <laughs> okay. Some people call him the right-hand opponent, but we just call him East. Um, now, last week we decided we were not going to talk about bidding at all, even a little bit. Okay, we just talked about the way a hand of hand of bridge was played, and the first way a hand of bridge is played is you deal out all the cards. Okay, so when you deal out all the cards, how many does everyone get? Thirteen. Okay, thirteen. And the way a hand of bridge is played is. Uh, everybody plays a card. High card or best card wins a trick, leads the next trick, so on and so forth. So at the end of a hand of bridge, how many tricks will there be? Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Any questions about what you missed last week? <laughs> yes, we're just hitting the high points. All right, today, and I know I said this last week. I'm going to say it again. I'm probably going to say it eight times over the next three weeks. This is a game. Okay? It's a game. I can say with certainty, pretty much certainty, based on you know these lessons, that nobody in this room is ever going to make their living from playing bridge. It's a game. Now, games are fun. And you do better at games if you know how to keep so we are going to talk just a little bit about keeping school. How many, how many cards does everyone get? 13. 13. So on average, how many tricks can each side take? Six. Six. So when I'm bidding, I'm bidding to take that many more tricks than six. So if I'm bidding to fulfill a three-level contract, how many tricks do I need to take to fulfill that? Nine. Nine. Now, the way scoring works is if I fulfill a contract, we get points. 
if the opponent set me in a contract, or if I fail to fulfill a contract, then the opponents get points. Okay. Now, the amount of points you get for fulfilling a contract depends on what the contract is. Now, who here has never played bridge? Ever. Does last week count? I mean, last, last week counts. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> never played bridge. Excellent. Now, there are two types of suits in bridge, or in a deck of cards. One of them is majors, the other one is minors. Which one do you think scores best? Majors. Majors. Okay, but, but yes, majors. Majors score better than minors. When we talk about keeping score, that is a very important piece of why we bid the way we bid. Now, let me talk about how this works. So I've got your little m, which is the minors. Majors, minors and majors. Now, this is probably a happy accident, okay. but they go in alphabetical order. So clubs and diamonds are the minors, and hearts and spades are the majors. So if you, if you can't think of any other way to remember that, that's a way. Everybody have a, one of these boxes on your table? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the boxes will also help you remember how that order. Okay. Clubs is the least, one club is the least bid, followed by diamond, heart, spade, and then one no trump is the highest one level bid. Minors and majors, 20 points. Per trick, over six. Okay. Hearts and spades are 30 points per trick. And no trump is unusual. Don't you love unusual? No trump is 40 for the first. Then 30 per. Okay, so, I have a question for you, and if I fulfill a contract, I get points, or my side gets points. Which is harder to fulfill, a two-heart contract or a four-heart contract? Four. A four-heart contract, because if I only take nine tricks, then I'll fulfill my two heart contract, but I would have gone down in my four heart contract. Okay, so in addition to this, 20 points a trick, 30 points a trick, and 40 then 30, there's something else. You get a bonus. If you fulfill a contract, and this is duplicate bridge, but it's similar in contract bridge, if you fulfill a contract, you get a bonus. Okay, there are a couple types of bonuses. The first is a game bonus. If I fulfill a contract, a game contract, then I get a game bonus. Any questions? Really? No one's going to ask? What's a game, What's a game contract? A game? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> a game contract is any contract that scores 100 points. Okay, so if I, if I bid and make a contract that, that um, scores 100 points, then I get a game bonus. So let me look. Game. Five of a minor. Four of a major, and actually three no. So we've got three types of game contracts. You got your three no trump, and how many tricks to fulfill a three no trump contract? Nine. Nine. And four, how many tricks to fulfill a four level contract? Ten. It's ten, and five level contract is eleven. eleven. That sound like a lot. It sounds like a lot, because how many tricks are in the deck? 13. 13. 13 tricks in the deck, and to fulfill a minor suit, con a minor game contract, 
I need to take 11 tricks. Sounds like a lot. So, when we're talking about game contracts, okay, we are talking about three no trump or four of a major. Okay, five of a minor. If you have a if a lot of cards on a minor, and figure out that you can't play three no trump. But I gotta tell you. If you can take 11 tricks in a minor suit contract, you can almost always take nine tricks in a no trump contract. Okay, so don't worry about five of a minor contract. You used to tell people, if you're gonna play five of a minor, you need a note from your mother. <laughs> and having a void or a singleton would be good as well. Void, of course, is a suit with a suit with no cards, so you have you don't have any hearts in your hand, okay? Or a singleton, singleton's a suit with one card. Questions so far? Uh, what, okay, I've got thirteen. When I get dealt a hand, I get thirteen cards, okay? If I have cards in every suit and I don't have a void. If I have a suit that doesn't have any, if I don't have any hearts, then I have a void in hearts. If I only have one heart, then I have a singleton in hearts. Yes, ma'am. Um, so if you bid a, uh, or if you have a trump of a certain uh, suit, uh, you're not playing no trump, every uh, trick that you get, let's say you get one from a minor, does that still count as a major point or does it count as a minor point? Trick is a trick. Good question. If, if I'm playing in a four hard contract, a trick is a trick. If I took a trick with the three of clubs, it's a trick. Okay? How do you do that? I, how do you, well, you run everybody out of clubs. How do you do that? <laughs> Unless somebody, unless I also have the two of clubs left. But yeah, how do you take a trick with the three of clubs? I, it, it takes a certain amount of skill. <laughs> or you just run everybody out of clubs is the real answer. All right. Now, if I am not in a game contract and I fulfill my contract, I still get a bonus. It's called a part score bonus. I haven't talked about bonuses yet. Okay. A game bonus is 300 points of fine. I'm going to start throwing out terms. And the reason we give you a book is because terms are in the book. But I'll explain them a little bit. Um, a, a game bonus is 300 points if I am not vulnerable. And 500 points if I am vulnerable. Any questions? Yes. Oh, what does that mean? Uh, yes, ma'am. Explain vulnerable and yes. non -vulnerable. Okay. Um, any Lost in Space fans out there? Seriously? Okay, thank you. Danger Will Robinson. No, we've seen it. We're just not fans. Oh, oh wow. That's harsh. Okay. Um, Vulnerable means you are in more danger. Okay. Vulnerable means I'm more apt to be penalized if bad things happen. Now, part of being vulnerable is if I take a risk and good things happen, then I get a bigger bonus. Okay. Um, we haven't talked about what happens if I go down in a contract. If I go down in a contract, then instead of me getting a score for fulfilling a contract, the opponents get a score for setting me. And they will get 50 points for every trick they set me if I'm not vulnerable, and 100 points for every trick they set me if I am vulnerable. And we aren't going to talk about doubling, but doubling exists as well, and it'll come up in just a moment. Yes, miss? Uh, so when you're talking about for the people that you set, you mean uh, for every trick you take that is um, one of theirs. So if they, let's say they're trying to get 11 tricks and you get, 
three, you only get 100 points because you only set them one? Correct. But often my goal is just, I'm just happy to set them. Set them two would be a happy bonus. I just don't want them to make their contract. Yes, miss. Yes, <coughs> Did you have a... Oh, yes. Um, explain vulnerable again. I give mean, us an example. Yeah. I'll give you an example. I, I am so... I'm going to give you an object. <laughs> well... No, no, no. I mean, Now, if you're playing bridge at your kitchen table, playing contract bridge, how do you figure out who's vulnerable or not? You're vulnerable if you have a game in hand, right? Okay, so two tricks to a rubber. If, you, if I've got a game, then my side is vulnerable, which means we need one more game to, full, to win the rubber. Uh, it also means that we are get a bigger penalty if we go down. Well, in duplicate bridge, we don't do legs on and rubbers. What we do is a hand of bridge. So in a hand of bridge, you will be given a board. And the board will describe to you whether you are vulnerable or not. Now, from this board, can anyone guess which side is vulnerable and which one isn't? Yes, red is a universal sign for danger. I don't know if it's universal, but cer certainly here it is. So if you are red, you're vulnerable. So north and south, if I set this on... Can you hold up this Sorry. Okay, north on this board, north and south would be vulnerable, and east and west would not be vulnerable. Now this would affect their bidding, it would affect how aggressive they are, along with a lot of other things. There will be times, and it pains me to say this, but I learned it very early in my life. It's on occasion, it's better to go down in a contract than to allow the opponents to fulfill a contract. Seems unusual, but if the opponents can make two spades, then their score, oh, you don't even know what their score would be because I haven't told you what the bonus is. What's the score for two spades without a bonus? Six, 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 okay, six, six, 20 times, or sorry, two times 30, 60. A part score bonus is 50 points. So the score for two spades making two is 100, or 110 points. Okay, if I go down one, Vulnerable in three hearts, my score is minus 100. Because going down is 100 points a trick if you're vulnerable. So minus 100, going down one, would get me a better score than allowing the opponents to make two spades. Now, I have said almost everything I'm going to talk about keeping score. Okay? Um... If you want to know what the score for three spades, doubled and redoubled, making six, there is no reason you would ever need to know that. On your bidding box, if you look in the back, it's like, oh my gosh. Three spades, pull out the three spades card. Look for the double X, and we'll go for the bold one. Three spades, double to redoubled, making six would be three over trick, it would be 2,160 points. Does that sound like a lot? Mm -hmm. It is. Now, the good news is you never have to memorize that score because you can always look it up, which is why we aren't going to talk about scoring much more. I do have one more object lesson for you, though. We just talked about the score for two spades making two. What's the score for three diamonds making three? Let's see, diamonds is a minor, and I made three of them. 60, part score bonus is 50, so that's 110. 
And now you should think. Hmm. I can get 110 points for taking eight tricks in a major. Or I can get 110 points for taking nine tricks in a minor. Okay, which one does it sound like a better idea to try? Major. 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 All right. So bidding revolves around the majors. Now there's one more thing about scoring I got to tell you. Um, part score bonus is 50. Uh, game bonus is 300 or 500, depending on whether you're vulnerable or not. So if you have enough points for game, you and your partner want to be in a game contract. Okay, now who here has been playing bridge for a while, or played bridge a while back? How many points do you tend to need to, between you and your partner to fulfill a game contract? 26. You know, that's what I was taught too. I was taught by someone I'm going to call Mom. <laughs> Love Mom. Um, this is the last time I will ever do this. I have a joke. I have a second joke for you. Little old lady on a beach. Spies hunky young lifeguard. Says, you know I'd really like to take hunky young lifeguard out to dinner. So walks over to hunky young lifeguard and says, young man, if you can tell me what I have here in my hands, I will take you out to a nice steak dinner. And the lifeguard was engaged to be married and you know, didn't want to ignore the woman, but it had to say something. So he said, ma'am, I think you have a 2,000 pound elephant there in your hand. And the woman looked at her hand and said, well, that's close enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You can't always make game with 25 points in your hand, but between the two hands, if you've got 25 points, you can tend to make a game contract. Now, there's one more thing I'm going to tell you about game contracts. If we have an eight card fit between us, meaning we've got um, between me and my partner, we have eight spades. I have five and he has three, or both of us have four. We tend to be able to take at least one more trick in a spade contract than we can in no trump. Okay? So there's two things, two very important things you need to know about bidding. First is if you have enough points for game, you want to be in a game contract. The second is if you have an eight-card major suit fit, that is a suit that you want to play the contract in, almost always. Are there exceptions to almost always? Yeah, but they come up so rarely that you just go with eight-card major suit fit. If we have one... I want to play in that suit. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. When you say an eight-card major suit fit, is that just in my hand or nope. between the two partners? It's you and I are partners. I've got five and you have three. That's eight. Okay. Okay, so instead of playing in no trump, I would prefer to play that hand in spades. Because we have eight, they have five. I can, I can ordinarily take at least one more trick playing in spades than I can in no trump. Doesn't always work, but it works often enough that that's a good guideline. Yes, ma'am? It doesn't matter which cards, like face cards? It actually, it doesn't. It, it's nice to have some pictures looking back at you, but it, it, if the opponents have the ace and king, ace, king, queen of spades, I can still usually do better in a spade contract if I've got eight of them, then I would be able to do in no trump. Good question. How, how do you know some, how many cards your opponent has? Because I'm until you've got the bid. Any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone? Any other questions? I'm going to answer your question now. It's just going to take a long, long time to do that. <laughs> All right. Seriously, any other questions before we go on to bidding? The eight spades, so what does 
26 points or no, doesn't matter what the point? Let me go over points now. Um, I might have skipped a step. You said that uh, 26 points is needed when you want to go to the game. Yes. So Actually, 25 eight, between me between me and my partner. And eight feet. And I'm looking for if we have eight, if we have a eight cards in a major suit between the two of us, we want to play in that suit. The game. Uh, we would want to if, if we've got eight spades and 26 points, we would want to be in a four spade contract. Now. Any other questions before I go over all the stuff I skipped over? <laughs> all right. Now, the first part of bidding is somebody gets to go first. Okay. Uh, if you're playing at your kitchen table, how do you figure out who goes first? Who's the first person to bid? The dealer. Or left of the dealer, depending on where you're playing. Must be a... Yeah, anyway. Okay, and Bridge, this board, will actually tell you who the dealer is. Dealer is this guy, uh, East. Okay? So if you're sitting East, you have a decision to make. Say, do I have enough to open the bid? Is my hand above average? You get to be the first person to act. Okay? And you got two things you can do. You can either bid something or you can pass. Now, Charles Gorin, many, 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 many years ago, came up with a point count system. Some of you may have seen this before. Ace is four, king is three, queen is two, jack is one. Okay, so when we're talking about points, we're talking about this, high card points, in addition to distribution, which we'll get to probably next week. Okay. So there's two ways to take tricks in bridge. The first is with high cards. Aces take tricks. Kings usually take tricks. Queens occasionally take tricks. And jacks, again, once in a while, take tricks. But look at this hand. diamonds, clubs. I've got ace, king, fifth, ace, fourth, stiff, or small, and three small. Okay? Now, is this card going to take a trick? No. No. It could. It's it's yeah. It's 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 yeah, if it's trump, even if you're playing in no trump, that card very possibly takes a trick. If it leaves. If it leads, that's right. So there are two ways to take tricks in bridge. The first is with high cards, or pictures looking back at you. The second is with long suits. Okay, Does that make some sense? Now, I'm going to give you some very basic guidelines for opening the bid. Okay. Looking at high card points, if you have 13 high card points, you can open the bidding. If you have 12 high card points, you are almost always going to open the bidding. The only time I'm not going to open with a 12 point hand is if I have an ultra balanced hand such as this. Right. Got a four card suit and three three card suits. 
We call this a four by three. Four by threes do not play well in no trump because I don't have any long suits to set up. They don't play well in trump contracts because I don't have any long suits to set up. They don't play well on defense because I can't trump anything. Okay, so basically four by threes don't play well. I'm not going to take a point away from my hand from a four by for a four by three. But in the back of my mind I say, yeah, I really hate this shape. Um so I'm not going to bid as aggressively as I may if I had a shapelier hand. Okay. Now I'm going to give you a rule. This rule came out about 30 years ago. It's called the rule of 20. And you should learn how to do this, and then I'll teach you something better in about 20 seconds. <laughs> okay? The rule of 20 says this. Take your high card points, add the number of cards in your two longest suits, and if it adds up to 20 or more, you have an opening bid. Okay, so I am going to put back the hand I had. Okay. By the way, some of you may be thinking, which I encourage you to do. Um, okay, if I'm going to open every 13-point hand, it doesn't matter what my shape is, I'm going to open it. That's a correct thought. Okay, the rule of 20 exist okay. to determine or to help you evaluate whether the shape of your hand plus the high card points warrant an opening bid. Now, I'm only going to open the hand if I think my hand is above average in its ability to take tricks. Okay? If I have an average hand, do I have a way to describe that hand? Pass. Pass. Okay, pass says I'm average if you're open it, or I'm not above average. You could be way below average. You could have a zero count. No pictures looking back at you at all, and that's also a pass. Okay, but we're opening our hand if we're above average, if our hand's above average in its ability to take tricks. Okay, by considering the high cards we have plus the shape of our hand. Can I say something a minute? By the way, I'm the director here. And I just want to tell you, if you're confused, don't worry about it. That's <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go him one better. Okay? If you're confused, how do you learn how to do stuff? By doing stuff. Okay? I, I'm, I'm going to be up here, and I'm going to do stuff. And I'm going to, you know, stuff's going to be on the board. But in about an hour, y'all are actually, or 45 minutes, give or take. We're actually going to be playing a couple hands of bridge. Okay, kind of like we did last week, except we don't have prearranged hands for you, so it'll be a little more interesting. We have the misfortune on occasion, people get dealt lesson number 48 hands on week number two. They say, how do you do that? Yeah, how would you bid this? And I'll say, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> By the way, it's... I haven't told you anything about my bridge playing. I'm a reasonably good bridge player. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but there are going to be hands that I find difficult to bid. Okay? Doesn't mean I don't take my best whack at it. So, let's look at this hand. How many high card points do we have? Uh, Eleven. Eleven. Okay, and how many cards do we have in my two longest suits? Nine. Nine. So I've got... Okay, so I've got five spades and four hearts. I've got 11 high card points. So this hand is a hand that is worthy of an opening bid, according to the rule of 20. Okay? If you're the second person, the first person is the opening bid. Aha. Now, she made a good point. It's a point I wasn't going to make for another three weeks. <laughs> what she said is if I'm going to open the bidding and somebody opens in front of me, I can no longer open the bidding. 
that's a true statement. I got to do something else. Now I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you what something else is for a few weeks. But true, there's only one opening bid in a bridge hand. Anybody ever watch Wimbledon tennis, men's tennis? Okay, and what happens in Wimbledon is the person serves and the points over, pretty much. Okay, a lot of times it's an ace or you can't return it. So opening the bidding gives your side an advantage. I get to go first, which means that you can't go first. You have to go after me. Ha, ha, ha. Deal with me. You don't actually get to pound your chest, but you can if you're at your kitchen table playing among friends. So any questions about the rule of 20? Yes, ma'am. So one must be the first set of one must be the deal. Actually, no, because if, if the person to my right is the dealer and they pass, then I have the same question. Do I have a hand that's worthy of an opening bid? Okay, so if I'm not the first person to bid, um, I can still open the bidding if everybody in front of me passed. Good question. But if my partner bids before I'm the fourth bidder, my Someone who passes, my partner bids. Yep. Which would mean he'd have to have 12 to 13 points. An opening hand. An opening hand, and they could use 20, the rule of 20. Okay. That automatically tells me because of the open period, I can't do that. That's correct. And, and what, this is going to be a next week kind of thing. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, that's okay. Um, yeah, right now we're looking at, do I have an opening hand? And if I do, how do I open it? We will, we may, depending on how quickly I go, get to responding, maybe. All right. Wait. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I get the 11 point, I mean the high card points, but okay. how did, and you had two long suits. Yeah. So tell me how you calculate like, yeah. the points okay. for those two high points. Okay, I have 11 high card points. Right. And I have nine cards in, well, I've got five spades. Okay. I've got four hearts. <coughs> so it adds up to 20. Okay, I've got 11 high card points, nine cards in my two longest suits. So it adds up to 20. Now. You count the cards plus you count the, I mean, you count the number of cards in length, and then you count the number of high card points. Yes. Okay. All right. Now, uh, yes, ma'am. Maybe you've said this, but what if your um, number of cards in the longest suits are not the same as your high card points? In other words, you've got high card points and the longest suits in the same suit. What if your diamonds and clubs are the number of longest suits? You know, I see where you're going here. So I'm going to put up another hand. I'm actually going to put up a couple more hands. So you don't count, when you're counting to the 20, you don't count the time. All right. Hand on the left. How many high cards? dreaded 12 point hand, 12 card hand, of all the direction. All right, how many points? 11, how many cards in my two longest suits? Nine. Is that 20? Is this an opening hand? Yeah. Which hand is better? The hand on the right, why is that? That's right, because I have my high cards and my long suits. Now, I have one more hand for you, which is why I've... you need to know the rule of 20, but y'all will appreciate this. Stop, I did it wrong. I hate doing that. All right, so the hand in the middle. 
Yep, hold on. Wait, stop. Yeah, put it back. <laughs> How many high card points? Eleven. 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 How many cards am I too long to suit? Nine. 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 So that's twenty. So this is an opening hand. No. 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 Why not? Because it's not above average in its ability to take tricks, so there must be something else. Now, about 20 seconds after somebody created the rule of 20, Marty Bergen, by the way, I believe, um, somebody said, you know, you're going to encourage people to open stuff like this. There must be something else. Because this is not an above average hand in its ability to take tricks. So here's the something. Um, because you don't have any aces and kings. Yeah, you, 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 you. after you lose the first eight tricks, you'll be set. Okay? I'm ready. I'm pacing myself. I'm going to lose a bunch of tricks, but then I'm going to take some tricks, maybe. Yeah. Um, so the something else is considering quick tricks. Okay? Quick tricks are holdings that will take tricks whether I'm on offense or defense, no trump or suit contract. And this is, these, these are holdings in one suit. Okay, ace king is two. If I have the ace king of a suit, two tricks. Ace queen is one and a half. Ace is one, king queen is one, and king x is a half. In the book. Um, yeah. Yes, of course it's in the book. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and these are called quick tricks. Holdings that will take tricks whether you're on offense or defense, suit contract, or no trunk. Okay? So, let's look at this hand. Okay, it's, you calculate the rule of 22 the same way as the rule of 20, but then you add in quick tricks. So, I've got 11 high card points, 9 cards in my two longest suits, and how many quick tricks do I have? Three. I've got 3. So the rule of 22 says if, your hand, if it adds up to 22 or more, you have an opening bid. Okay, so this is a hand I would open. Questions. Do we need a little bit of practice with this? I'm not going to tell you how I would open. I'm just going to say this is an opening hand. So let me do this. <laughs> All right. How many high card points? Oh, 11. One of those is a king. Um, how many cards my two longest suits? Eight. Eight. And how many quick tricks? Two and a half. Two and a half. So let's see. 11 and 8 and two and a half is 21 and a half, which means you almost have an opening bid. Do you know what you have if you almost have an opening bid? Yeah. You have a pass. That's an excellent way to describe this hand. Almost have an opening bid. Now, I'm going to give you some advice. This isn't going to come up tonight, but at some point, you are going to find yourself in a position where you have to think. <laughs> oh, who knew? Okay. If you think and 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 then pass, everyone knows you got 11 count. Okay? So get in the habit of being able to, you know, do it quickly. And how do you do it? And it just takes practice, which we're going to give you in a few minutes. Any questions? All right. Now. Has anybody read the book and figured out what the name of the system we play is? Is it even in the book? No, I should know this. I don't think it is. 
Yo, friendly bridge. And it is friendly, but we, we the lessons we do are based on a system called Standard American. Standard American with five card major. Now, once again, who here has never played bridge? Excellent. Now, if we're playing a system called Standard American with five card majors, okay, how many cards do I have to have in a major before I open one of a major? Five. Uh, yes. Okay. Now, across the pond, they play something different. They play that you can open a four card major, which is fine. There are advantages to both systems. Now, if I find out that I, I have this hand, if this hand is worthy of an opening bid, there's really only three ways I can open it. I can open it one of a major, or one no trump, or one of a minor. Okay? Massive hands, I can open <coughs> two clubs. We'll talk, talk about that in a couple months. If I have a hand that doesn't quite meet the requirements to open at the one level, but I got a string of cards in a suit like this. So I got a hand like this. Now, what suit do I want to play this hand in? Spades. Now, if I don't play this hand in spades, is the hand really worth much? No. no. So on occasion, I may, even though this is not a good hand, it's a good hand if spades is trump. So I may, people that have been playing bridge for a long time ago, how do I open this hand? Three spades. Three spades. And again, beat your chest. Deal with me. You now get to start describing your hand at the four level if you're one of my opponents. It's called a preempt. Again, couple months. Today we're just going to talk about garden variety opening hands. We open garden variety opening hands at the one level. There's only three ways to do that. You got your one of a major. You got your one no or two no and then one of a mine. Now, we already talked about the requirements for opening one of a major, okay? If I have a hand, I've said, this hand is worthy of an opening, opening bid, and it has five cards in a major, then I would open one of that major. Okay. If you have an opening hand and a five card major, you would open one of that major. So I've got this hand, actually the hand I had up there before. You know, I hate to do this. I'm a CPA. Um, to pass the CPA exam, you have, to, or to become a CPA, you have to pass four relatively rigorous exams, or parts of an exam. And the minimum score to pass on each part is a 75. Okay? There is a group of CPAs that call themselves the 300 Club. Okay? If you are a member of the 300 Club, then you got the minimum passing score <laughs> on each of the four exams. Minimum passing score on each of the four parts of the CPA exam. And do you know what they call those people? CPAs. CPAs. <laughs> okay, so if you have an opening hand, you have an opening hand. Is this a good opening hand? It meets the minimum requirements for an opening hand, but it's an opening hand, so I'm going to open it. And this hand has a five card major, so I'd open this hand one spade. Questions so far? I'm going to make a change, you know, because I can. Hmm. How 
many high card points? 11. How many cards in my two longest suits? 10. How many quick tricks? Two and a half. Is this an opening hand? You actually get to do this pretty quickly. I don't know. It's probably 23 and a half. Could be 22 and a half. All I know is I'm looking at it. It's an opening hand. In the three I go. I'm not even doing the math. I know I could. I like to think I could because, you know, I'm a CPA and experienced bridge player. Okay, but this is an opening hand. Now I've got two five card majors. If you have two five card suits, you always, every single time, without exception, open the higher ranking of those two suits. <laughs> so this hand, I would open one spade. <clears throat> okay, our first bids, the first time I act, if I'm opening the bidding, it's just about starting to describe my shape. Okay, if I open one spade, I have a hand that meets the requirements to open the bidding with a five card spade suit. Now, next week, if my partner doesn't like spades, we'll figure out that next I would bid hearts. But that's going to be next week. Okay, but for now, Two five card suits, you always open your higher ranking one. Now, a trick question for you. So, so why is the spades higher than the cards? Uh, it's one of the intricacies of the alphabet. Seriously, I don't know, it just is. They, they, they didn't ask me when they did the suits in order. It's alphabetical order. No, when I was asking, he said he opened always with the highest ranking. So why is space? Oh, oh, the oh but, ranking? because but because in the order. On it, on any one suit, clubs is lowest, followed by diamonds, followed by hearts, followed by spades, followed by no trump. Okay. Anybody here ever been on eBay? Okay, uh, so you're in an auction. Okay, and the way auctions work is if I open the bidding, then the person after me can't bid lower than me. They have to go higher than me. Okay, so if I open one heart, then the next person could bid one spade, which is a higher bid than one heart. But if I open one spade, if you want to bid hearts, you need to do it at the two level. Okay? So if I want to bid spades and hearts, I'm going to open one spade, and you'll say a no trump, and then I'll say two hearts. So I get to bid both of my suits, but you can pick at the two level. And this is the next week kind of thing. But the reason we always open a higher ranking suit it's because we're planning ahead. If they like this suit, great. If they don't, I've got another suit that I can mention and I can do it cheaply. Okay, I'm just planning ahead. Yes, ma'am? If you're the partner that gets to bid first and then it gets to your, uh, your other partner, um, can you take what they've said and add it into your score so you bid a little higher knowing that you, they have that and you um, no, what, the way the auction is going to work, um, and this will become apparent in a few minutes, I'm going to make a number of bids. We're just having a conversation. I'm describing my hand to you. The fact that I open one spade doesn't mean that I anticipate we're going to end up in one spade. Okay? Partner, I have an opening hand that has a five-card spade suit. That's the first, and if we were talking out loud, hey, I have an above average hand with five spades. Tell me something about your hand. And we'll go back and forth, and the opponents may intervene as well and start talking to each other until three people pass, at which point we will have 
a contract. Thank you. So we're, we're just talking. It, this is the first part of our conversation. Her, her question was, if I can't open a major, what do I do? Something else. <laughs> All right, so I've got this hand. Is this an opening hand? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> did, did you have to do math? No. How do you open this fine hand? One spade. Partner having an above average hand with a five bird spade suit. Okay? Any questions? Now, uh, yes, ma'am. So I'm confused why you wouldn't say one heart since you have a stronger heart. Well, we're trying to find an eight card major suit fit. And I'm not going to be able to convince you of this in a matter of seconds. But if we have an eight card major suit fit, that will be a good denomination for us to play in. So if I open a spade and you have spade support for me, we're probably going to end up playing in spades. Now, are these hearts going to come in handy in a spade contract? Yep, yeah, because yeah, after we run the opponents out of spades, I still take tricks with these hearts. But the heart is more good. Better hand. Uh, the, the hearts are much better than my spades. Yeah. And, and it depends. My partner could have the ace queen of spades. My partner could have the two, three, four of spades. Or no spades. Or no spades. Has that ever happened to anyone? Yeah. So, so <laughs> what would, if you're the partner and you're, you open with one spade and I have no spades, what would my response be? Pass or? And, depend, and, and I, I can appreciate wanting to get into responses. For now, I just my goal is my goal for this evening has always been: Do I have an opening hand? And if so, how do I open it? Okay. Uh, in general, how do I open this hand? One spade. I'm going to give you a brief preview of next week's lesson. Okay? If I open one of a suit, I can have up to 19 points. Okay? So if I if I can have up to 19 points, how many points do we need for game? 25, 25, 25. Not 26, but 25. 25. Love mom, but it's 25. Actually talk to mom on the on the way here. Uh, she asked if I was going to tell a joke. I said, well, always tell a joke. Um, but the number we're looking for is 25. Okay, so if I can have up to 19, I, I'd like to hear a response from you if you have six. So if I open at the, if I open one of a suit and you have a six count, I want to hear a peep out of you. Six. Six, six high card points. Any, any. Okay. Yeah, in any six high card points, I want to hear a peep out of you. What is the peep? A peep? Uh, the peep is going to be a bid. A, a, no, a, a non pass bid. Sorry. Sorry, technical bridge term. Are you, are you you're like bidding your own hand, basically? Is that what you're doing? We're talking. Okay, we're having a conversation. I think that's right. Yeah. All right, 15 minutes left. Stay with me. 15 minutes. Now, remember the hand a couple weeks ago where we had a bunch of spades and a bunch of diamonds and the opponents had a bunch of clubs and a bunch of hearts and we tried to play that in no trump and we went down like the Titanic, <laughs> only worse. Okay? Um, no trump is a very specific bid. If I'm opening the bidding, the first thing I'm telling you is about my shape. Again, I can have an 18 count and open one spade. I can have an 11 count and open one spade. Okay, I'm just telling you about my shape. Now, there's a very specific bid where I can describe my shape and my strength at the same time. 
No trump. One no trump is 15 to 17. Two no trump is 20. 2021, 20, and both are balanced. Okay? A balanced hand has no voids, no singletons, and not more than one doubleton. No voids, no singletons, not more than one doubleton. Doubleton is two cards in a suit. So there are only three hand shapes which meet those qualifications. You got your 5332, three, three, you got your 4432, four, and you got your 4333. Okay? So if you have these one of these three hand shapes and either 15 to 17 points, 15 to 17 you open it one no. 20 or 21, you open it two now. Okay. Does that make some sense? What about the missing two points? Uh, you do something else. <laughs> Don't you love something else? Now, I'm going to say something really important, and I do this on occasion. Bidding one no trump gets the hand off my chest. Partner, I'm 15 to 17, and I'm balanced. Do something intelligent. We have gadgets on finding out whether we have an eight-card fit or not, and whether we have enough points for game or not. I'm having difficulty hearing you back here. I have never had anybody say they're having difficulty hearing me. Uh, murmuring in the back. Yes, hard. That's okay. Now, by the way, it, for those of you that weren't here last week, um, we are going to be doing this for two more lessons after this. Okay, where I'm going to be talking for 75 minutes while people on the back row are um, playing. Go ahead. Try and. Thank you. All right. So, 15 to 17 points and balance is a one no trump. Okay? This is in the book. 20 or 21, I'm going to open two no. Okay? And the hands off my chest. I would encourage you not to deviate from these point values because what happens is if I open a no trump, I'm going to ask my partner to do something we like to call math. And they should be able to figure out whether we got 25 points or not. And if I open with point values other than this, it's possible that we won't end up in a game contract or we will to our detriment. Okay, so when I open a no trump, partner, I got this much of this much. No more, no less. Now, if you can't open a no trump and you can't open a major, what's left? Minor. Minor. Okay, now you are going to open your longest minor. Okay? So I'm going to give you a couple of hands. And you can tell me how you would open these hands. So, can I open a major? 
No. No. Can I open no drop? No. No. So how do I open this fine hand? One die. Come on, say it with me. One diamond. Now, does one diamond look like a pretty good description of this hand? Is this where I live? How about this one? No, do I anticipate we end up playing this hand in diamonds? No. What am I doing? I'm starting a conversation. Partner, I have an opening hand. Couldn't open one of a major, couldn't open one no trump. My diamonds are at least as long as my clubs. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, please bid a major, please bid a major, please bid a major. <laughs> okay, but I'm going to open this hand one diamond. Okay, because all I'm doing is starting a conversation with my partner. Does that make some sense? Yes, ma'am. So you did your longest suit in my as opposed to you always did spade over hearts. Um, no, it, it, if I had this hand, how many high card points? Still 14. How do I open this fine hand? One heart. Okay, because I've got five of them. If I've got two five card suits, I'm always open, opening my higher ranking one. But when I'm opening the bidding, I can't open a major, I can't open no trump. I'm opening my longest minor. And you know how I learned this lesson? Because I got to tell you, I didn't learn this lesson from mom. Love mom. Really do. I got to ask, is anybody accustomed to opening hands such as this one club? I was taught to open hands such as this one club. Because I couldn't open a major, couldn't open no trump, so I did a short club or a convenient club. And you know what happened one day when I opened this hand one club? <laughs> I got to play one club. And my partner, who's a much better player, said, Ed, why didn't you open one diamond? Yeah, you only have to learn, you only have to hear that once to make it make sense, right? So you're going to open your longest minor. Now, if they're equal, you're going to open, if you have three cards in each minor, you're going to open one club. If you have four cards in each, or five cards in each, or six cards in each, you're going to open one diamond. If you have seven cards in each, you need to call the director. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> that, that, isn't that, you're not showing the strength in that. Wouldn't that be a two diamond bid? Um, no, and his question was, would that be a two diamond bid? It's like, no, I, I'm going, and as you figured out, just dipping my toe in the auction doesn't fully express the shape and strength of my hand. Okay, so if I get a second chance to bid, I will bid diamonds again with this hand. Wild horses couldn't pull another diamond bid out of me with this hand. Uh, but no, um, a, two, a, a massive, massive hand um, it tends to have at least 20 points in it or be able to take at least nine tricks in a minor, eight and a half tricks in a major. So yeah, this is this is just a one diamond open, but a very good one diamond open. <laughs> Any questions? Yes, ma'am. On this hand to the left. Yes, ma'am. Count for me again, because I, I was only getting like 13 points. But is it because you're doing your quick trick? Oh, I'm actually getting 13 points as well. Any time you have a 13 point hand, you have a hand that's worthy of an opening bid. If you have less than 13 points, your shape and your accommodation, your shape and your high cards could get you to opening bids. So for instance, if I had this, and I'm gonna say, we're about to wrap up. I'm gonna say something really important. Okay, How many high card points? 
I've got 10. How many cards in my two longest suits? I've got 10. How many quick tricks? Two and a half. Is this an opening bid? No. Now, does it meet the rule of 22? Yes. So is this an opening bid? I heard somebody say no. And that's fine. There are going to be hands that I would open that Paul Anderson wouldn't open. And there are going to be hands that Paul Anderson would open that wouldn't meet Chris's standards. Okay? That's why this is such a great game. <laughs> Seriously. I'm, now, there, okay. I'm going to put up one last hand, and if we get this right, I'll wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure's on. Pressure's on. <laughs> no more, no more. No. Is this an opening hand? Yes. 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 How do you open this hand? One Spain. Got a story for you. Back when I was learning to play bridge, um, I was invited to play with a really, really good player. Her name is Dale Dermer. Comes up to write about here on me. She was probably winning tournaments when I was a kid, I'll say. Um, and what is my goal when I play with Dale Dermer? To play well enough that she would play with me again. Okay. Any guesses how Dale Dermer would open this hand? Come on, how would Dale Dermer open this hand? One spade. Okay. There are going to be some hands that everybody in the bridge playing world will treat the same. This is a one spade open. Okay. Any game you play. The one spade open. Whether you have zero master points, you got eight thousand master points. Okay. Now it's when you get the hands such as this. Okay, that some people would consider this to be a, an opening hand, and some people wouldn't. It's it's it's, it's a ten count. Okay, it's a ten count with two five card suits. And I put X's up here. If I put 10s and 9s, it would be a better hand. Okay? But I'm going to tell you something really important. And I learned this a long time ago. Never in this room will somebody come in and say, I'm sorry. What you did was so bad that we are not going to allow you to play here anymore. As a matter of fact, I think you should just go home now. I'll, I'll make your apologies to your partner. It doesn't happen. Okay, and it doesn't happen in, my, in the open games that I play in. Because there's some god-awful stuff that happens in those games too. This is a game. It's a fun game, and y'all are about to play this fun game with people who are also trying to learn how to play bridge. Any questions? All right, we are going to take five minutes. We've got water and M&Ms and such. Uh, we will be ready to play bridge when we get back. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.